Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the lock-in amplifier to measure the, the resistance of a small wire. So the reason you, you're going to need to use the lock-in is a, a standard digital multimeter, even an oscilloscope, can't measure signals as small as the resistance of some of these wires. So what the trick is, is to use a lock-in amplifier which allows you to play around and, and measure the signal of the wire. So the materials that you're going to need, first the waveform generator, the metal box with the wire that we have in the lab, a couple BNC cables, and of course the lock-in. So how does the lock-in work and, and what is it doing? So there's a lot of math involved, so be aware, but first thing that happens is you supply a reference signal to the lock-in. Then you supply an input signal that has a phase shift relative to the reference signal, or optimally it wouldn't, but you never know. So then the lock-in amplifier takes them and it multiplies them together to create something called the phase sensitive detector output. So it's multiplying them and they have different phases, so it's outputting it as this, which is, you could also identify as that, which means it has two frequencies. One at the difference between the input and reference signal, and another at the addition of them, the sum of them. So if they're equal to one another, what happens is we get the PSD output um, of two different signals. One that's a time-independent DC signal, and another that's a time-dependent AC signal that's at twice the frequency. Now, the lock-in uses a low-pass filter, though. So that's essentially an RC circuit. So the, um, the low-pass filter basically takes any frequencies that are higher than the reference frequency and eliminates them from the measurement in the circuit. So what you see before is we have the previous output from the phase sensitive detector where we have this cosine 2 omega RT. So that's twice the frequency as the reference. So the low pass filter removes that high frequency and that leaves us with an output of just one half the amplitude of the signal, the amplitude of the reference times cosine of the phase shift between them. So what we notice though is that this output is dependent on the phase difference. And we don't really want that because if there is a phase difference, we, we want to be able to take that into account. So we use a dual phase lock-in amplifier. So what that means is that we have two phase sensitive detectors in there. The first one is the one that I just showed you. And the second one has a reference oscillator that's 90 degrees out of phase from the first phase sensitive detector. That means that we have a second reference signal of VRT equals the amplitude times sine omega RT plus 90 degrees. So what happens, and a good reminder is that the two phase sensitive detectors act independently from one another. So the first phase sensitive detector does all of its multiplication and math and the second one does it independently. So we multiply the input signal times that second uh, phase sensitive reference signal. Then we send that through a low pass filter to be able to get the output of the second phase sensitive detector, uh, which is roughly equal to the amplitude times sine of the phase difference. So again, we have our first phase sensitive detector output, which is proportional to cosine theta. And we have the second one, which is proportional to sine theta. And what we could do now is define three variables, x to equal cosine theta, y to equal sine theta, and r to equal x squared plus y squared to the one half. Now, x is called the in-phase component, because that's the component that's in phase with the reference, and y is called the quadrature or out-of-phase component, and then r is the total sum of the amplitudes. So, if we were to go and look at the, the front face of the dual phase lock-in, we could see that right here, we have our, um, our, if we hit the display button, we could change it to display whether it's X, so the in phase, or R, the total. Then we can also look at the other panel, which is channel two, and we could hit display on that channel, and we could look at either the Y, or out of phase and quadrature component, or theta, the phase difference between them. Now, other important parameters on the lock-in, 
come from that top left corner, we see the time constant with a couple different times, as well as some bandwidth filters, the 6 dB, 12 dB, etc. And so what is the time constant? So the RC filter is taking those, uh, the signals coming in and it's eliminating them at a certain rate. So one RC filter is designed to cut out 37% of the frequencies coming in above that value. And so what happens is this slope of this downfall right here is based on whether you have six decibels, 12, 18, 24, et cetera. So as you increase that value, this cuts off further and further and further. Um, now, the advantage of having a higher one is that obviously you cut off more frequencies at a greater rate, but as you add more decibels, you're adding another RC circuit in series to the previous one which makes room for more noise to come in from stuff like Johnson noise, which is thermal noise of the capacitors and everything else. There's a lot of great readings on this, so I definitely recommend you go through them. But then the time constant is just the seconds that it takes for the waveform to drop by three decibels or 37% of its amplitude. Um, so now the setup, we go to the waveform generator and we go to utility and we hit the sync on function or sync out. And what this does, this allows us to create a, a waveform that is the exact same as the one that we're gonna output. So we use that as our reference. Then we could go onto the back of the waveform generator and we could click and we could use the BNC connector on the sync out function right there. And we connect that directly on this right side panel here to the ref in button. Then we click the source and we change it from internal, it's gonna hit unlock and then those green lights will go off. Then we change the trig function to say positive edge. There's more readings on why you do this as well that I definitely recommend you look, you look through. And then again on the waveform generator, we turn on the output for channel one. We obviously change the frequency and the amplitude to what we see fit. Then we connect channel one into the left side of the metal box. Then the right side of the metal box with a BNC connector, we connect that to the lock-in. We connect that right to channel A in the bottom left-hand corner. So now we're interested in taking some measurements. Looking at our circuit diagram of the whole entire setup, we see that the signal generator has the output going right into the metal box, first through a resistor in series with the wire that we're trying to measure. So that's a one kilo ohm uh, resistor in the case of our apparatus. Then the wire is connected to ground and it is also output into the input section of the lock and amplifier. And the sync out function is connected into the reference. So the voltage output by the generator we call VA, the voltage coming out of the circuit and into the lock-in we call VB, and I very much recommend that you wind up going through Ohm's law on your own for this circuit and deriving these equations from scratch. What you see is that the current through the system equals VA over the resistor plus the resistance of the wire, and it also equals VB over the resistance of the wire. Now, we could show that the resistance of the wire equals VB over VA times R series, which is that if we go back to the, um, the wire right here, we see that that is the resistor right here that we just put in series with the wire of interest. And yeah, so now we can measure the resistance of the wire. And thank you.